Good day, good morning, good afternoon, all that good stuff. How are you? My name is Steve, and today we're going to talk about scroll magic. Before we start, I want you to try out my survey at bit.ly slash PKS survey. Why, you may ask? We would like to know a lot more about why and how people learn online so that we can develop something that helps you in the biggest way possible. So it only takes about five minutes. Please try it out. So what is scroll magic? It's a jQuery plugin, allows for fine-grained control of user scrolling, and you can animate basically anything via CSS, and your scroll as you scroll your mouse wheel down the page becomes much like a YouTube video. You'll see this in the demo where as you scroll down the page, things animate very smoothly according to your scroll. Let's jump right into the example. I actually just redesigned the pagekeysolutions.com website to use scroll magic because I thought it was a really cool effect. So here it is. So as we go to the website here, I'll start scrolling on the right hand side. It looks like everything is just going to stay put. But when you scroll and enjoy, the background fades out, some new stuff starts popping in, things are going all over the place. So elements are flying in, flying out appearing and disappearing as you can see it's really there's really no limit to the things that you can do with this bit of software it doesn't have to be linear it's almost like a PowerPoint right in your browser it's pretty cool before we get into the nitty-gritty of how to get this done I just wanted to point out a tip that I wish that I knew when I started the project that I just showed you and that is centering things in the screen there are a number of techniques for this but the one that I liked the most for this kind of thing I found on CSSTricks.com. It makes use of fixed positioning, top left percentage, and element translate. And it really helped me towards the end, after I did it wrong quite a few times, to get things perfectly centered in the screen. Here's an example. All you have to do is apply these four properties. The first is position fixed. This means that the position of the element is independent of its parent element. It's positioned relative to the window. Next, top 50%, left 50%. This moves the element 50% from the top of the screen and 50% from the left of the screen. Intuitively, you would think that that would take care of the centering. However, you have to remember that the top left corner of the element is considered 0, 0. Basically, that's where everything is moving from. That's the anchor point. For that reason, we need the fourth step, which is transform, in which we translate negative 50%, negative 50%. In this case, unlike top and left, the percentage is actually percent of the element's length or width. So by translating it 50% of its width to the left and 50% of its height back up, it gets it perfectly centered. So how will we get started and actually use this? I want you to please create a new folder and a file called index.html, open it in your favorite text editor, and then I'll show you how to include the right libraries in the proper order and we'll get started with our first animation. If you don't want to go through that, you can clone my YouTube repository. The code is right there. And I provided a boilerplate. The boilerplate basically has all the basics set up for you so you can jump right into the animation part. All right, welcome. Here we go. We're going to jump right into the code. Here's the boilerplate that I wrote. All it has is a little bit of styling and basically a few blocks. Um, those blocks just being large div elements that take up space. Also a modal, which is currently hidden. It's like a pop-up. We'll see what it does in a few minutes. And at the bottom here, we include a whole bunch of scripts in an order that took me a while to figure out. First of all, you need jQuery since it's all a plugin of jQuery. And we initialize our controller. So as it stands, our little boilerplate code looks just like this. A title, block one, block two, block three. Colorful blocks. Last one's a little too bright. Let's also take a look at what it will look like when we're done. On the right hand side, we have the debugger trigger. This is part of scroll magic, and you can remove it when you're done. It's good for debugging. Either way, it helps you see what's going on. As we start to scroll down the page, our first trigger goes off, and it slowly turns block to orange. Next, we have the show modal trigger, and we're finishing up the orange one. Now we're going to show modal. And very slowly, if I go backwards, it goes back again, completely based on where your scroll bar is. And as we go through here, the modal continues until it's perfectly centered in the screen. Then block four and five really don't have an animation. That's what we'll be creating. So every time we move a certain group of elements or perform an animation, it's going to be called a scene. So we'll create our first scene. First, we need to define our trigger element. 
This is the thing that causes the animation to start when our cursor passes it. In this case, it'll be block two. And this is a CSS selector. It's the same syntax that you use when styling or selecting things in jQuery. Next, we have duration, which I just set to 500. I think it's pixels. Now we'll call set tween. We'll tell it what exactly we're animating first. In this case, it's the same as the trigger element. The second argument to set tween is also duration. I'm not really sure what the difference is, but the default value is one, and it seems to work. Then we're going to pass an object in the brackets. This object represents all of the CSS or style changes that we will perform. If there's a dash in the CSS selector, it converts to camel case. In this case, background dash color becomes background color, all one word. We'll change the background color to orange. Next we call add indicators. This is the thing that adds the little debug line so we can see where the trigger is. We can also give it a name. In this case, we'll just describe what we're doing. Turn block to orange. Finally, we'll add this scene to our controller. Let's make another scene. This time we'll show the hidden modal. You'll notice in our style up here that the modal is currently set to top negative 25%. In other words, it's 25% above the top of the screen, completely out of view. To bring it into view, we'll use the trigger element as block three again. We won't bring it into view until we pass block three. The duration is 500. Now that I think of it, I did set the height to each block to 500, so the duration is in pixels. We can set another tween. This time, the element we're affecting is modal. We'll keep a duration of one, and we'll change the top parameter to 50%. Once again, we can add indicators to tell what we're doing exactly. And finally, we'll add it to the controller. Typo. And once again, here's what it looks like when we run the code. We have our trigger, we begin turning block to orange, and it finishes after 500 pixels. And now modal's flying in for 500 more pixels, and it's over again. We can go backwards, and it will undo itself. So that's all there is to it, code-wise. Now I'm sure you're eager to go out and try this immediately. Before you do, let me warn you with one more tip. If you ever notice a flash when you first reload the page, it's probably because your default CSS in your CSS file or in the style element on your page doesn't match what scroll magic thinks it should be. Just make sure that you define the element state before an animation in your CSS styles. This way, when you start the page and scroll magic moves everything with JavaScript, it's actually already in place with CSS. So it'll all look good. No flashing. Thanks again for watching the tutorial. Probably in less time than it took you to watch this, you can also go take the survey. Once again, at bit.ly slash pks-survey. Thank you and have a great day.